Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch, glad you could join me. On this week's show, a recent trip to Victoria had the opportunity to go to the outstanding Shannon's Auction House at Heatherton near Melbourne. Then Australia's most travelled lady, Katrina Roundtree's husband James, shows us his WB Utes in this week's Classic Restos on the Road. <laughs> Well, while I was in Melbourne and Victoria, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to come out here to Heatherton, check out the Shannon's Auction House. This state-of-the-art facility is really well worth a visit. We've got a building here 70 metres long that way and 30 metres wide this way. It's chock-a-block full of classic vehicles, memorabilia, and we've got motorbikes as well. There's a 90% ratio of turnover here every auction that happens every two, two and a half months. Come with me and I'll, I'll show you some of the stuff that's here. Uh, the FJ, not the 48215, that's where it all began. If it wasn't for these cars, you wouldn't have been able to enjoy your, your VF and the last model Commodore made. And if you go back even further, if it wasn't for the likes of Henry Ford, well, we wouldn't have most of our motoring history. The quality of the weights you hear at Shannon's is just unbelievable. Take this 1970 HT Monaro. What an incredible time, back when car manufacturers used to put racing stripes on the paint. Oh, they'd paint the stripes on. Themed from the United States of America, back in the days when, well, racing cars were sold through your local dealer. It was about performance and the image. A performance car that you could go and buy. Here in Australia, we've got this 1970 HT Monaro sitting here in all its glory with its racing stripe down the centre of the hood. And, you know, it wasn't all about, you know, big roaring, big block power. We had a 253 Australian built Holden V8 sitting under the, the hood or the bonnet of this car. Again, this is a car that was restored um, just over 20 years ago and done to perfection. This interior, have a look at that. Even in 2022, that to me is, you know, you could almost say that's a, that's a sumptuous interior. I, I think that's beautiful. It's, uh, it's not overdone, it's well styled. The, uh, the low back bucket seats bolster well and uh, the vinyl is still in, in fantastic condition for its time. And what is it about an AM radio with all the stations on the front, depending on what state you're listening to, you tune it in to whatever radio station you wanted to. Remember that as kids growing up? All that stuff we took for granted. Well, this car has one of those radios. And how's this big bad HQ, 1972? What do we say about this? We've got a car that oozes the game colour scheme of the early 70s, complete with a black and white houndstooth interior, which I think goes hand in hand, especially with these Holdens. And of course, the Aussie built 308 lurking under the hood of this car as well. It's got a sunroof. It's been, well, it was added. You could tell it's been added. It's kind of unusual too. It's like a vinyl flip back top there. So that's something different with this car. HQ, first of the four coil spring suspension as well. They rode really nice. This car here, in all its exuberance, up for auction. And no doubt that's gonna to go to a loving home very, very soon. Here at Shannon's, it's all about variants. Have a go at this, 1974 XB Fairmont. What a beautiful car. The Australian copy of the Ford Torino in the United States of America. Fuselage styling, although Coke bottle styling was still a term used back in the early 70s. This is a beautiful example of an XB. 
And to be quite honest, you don't see many XBs getting around these days. They're, well, they can be a bit of a forgotten model, but they've come into their own as well. A lot of guys are after an XB. XAs used to get overshadowed as well. Look how popular they are. But we look inside the XB's interior, of course, the high back bucket seats and the sweep around dashboard was something that always used to get me as a kid. They were a luxurious themed car. When you look at the room, still a compact car in this country compared to the, the big full size jobs in the United States. But these were the family size cars. It used to take five people, a caravan or a boat, and go around Australia and this is what they did. This was the year of the car that, that was before our SUVs. These were the family cars, take the kids to school, um, the travelling sales rep, uh, the list goes on and on how uh, versatile our Aussie built cars were. My dad had one of these brand new back in 1974. I can remember when he bought the sales brochure home. He got a new company car every couple of years. It was an XB Falcon 250, but the same, uh, same interior pretty well and the same colour interior as well and um, I can still remember the Rego, HUX 263. It was, a, it was a good car, it was a beautiful car. When these were brand new back in their day, Ford Australia was uh, really building a good car. Who would have ever have thought that an XB Fairmont would have uh, fetched up to 65 or $75,000? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they have, and there's one right here. Could be yours. And if something smaller is more your style, how about this 1962 console? This is like a fill the market gap uh, between the Anglia and the, uh, the Zephyr Zodiacs in the time, 1962, 1500 uh, CC engine, 1.5 litre. Um, all the very best here with four drum brakes as well. And this car's kind of special because it has never been restored. Can you believe that? So for a car of this age, uh, and have such a straight body with an original interior. This is a car that hasn't been messed with. So you know I like that in a car, an original car. Something that hasn't been messed with uh, means a lot. It's got its original rubbers around the quarter glass, some tears in the seats. But you know what? Nothing's hidden. Nothing's been tarted up for sale, so to speak. What you see is what you get. And these preceded the uh, sporty Cordies as well. It used to go to Bathurst and they held their own as well. They're, a, they're a, a good car. They're a good car for what they were back in the time. So here at Shannon's, there's even one of these up for grabs as well. And if you're into your bikes, well, you know, you're, you're catered for as well. Um, <clears throat> I've never ridden a bike. Well, I have. I have. I should, have, should I say this, that I've come off a motorcycle about seven times and the total amount of times that I've ridden a bike is seven times. I've always been a car guy, but I've always had respect for the people that do ride. And like cars, they're still classic pieces of machinery. And there's been plenty of bikes on classic restos where I'll let the owners tell their story. But here we have Harleys, Ducatis, BMWs, Yamahas, got a couple of Hondas down the back there. So even if you're looking for a bike, you want to come along and check out the bikes. This is a, a beautiful facility here, the Shannon's Auction House. If you're part of a car club, this uh, meeting room is available for your car club for your meetings, once a month or how often they, they take place. We've got a, a nine metre long table by three metres wide here. You can sit 35 or 40 people around this table, it's huge. And being nine metres long, I think that's great because if you don't like someone, you can sit right up the other end from them, far enough away. That's good, I like that idea. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fiberglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands. Which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. 
The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts. Available through the Holden Certified Service Network. What can uh, customers expect when they walk through the door at Shannon's? Well, uh, I guess we've got a showroom full of cars all the time. Uh, we've got uh, auction advisors on hand to assist any of our customers. So the showrooms, uh, whether it's Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane, are open six days of a week. So Monday through to Saturday, um, you know, we, we, we've got staff on hand and, and people can take a straw through. You, know, you don't need to come in here and feel pressure that you need to buy anything. Uh, we're welcome, you know, we probably get somewhere in the city of 250 to 400 people through a week just coming in to have a wonder, uh, a look at the cars. Some people coming in for their lunch break. Um, so, so it's a great, great place to come through and, and just look what's around. I mean, is you know, such a, a variety of vehicles and uh, memorabilia and bikes uh, that it, it's hard to get bored. As Flesh mentioned earlier, you know, let it be inspiring to people to come into to this space and actually, uh, you know, a lot of people aren't ready to buy, you know, they, they've been thinking about it and or, you know, they're unsure of what potentially to what they want but you know come in and see what's here you know whether it's you know american japanese european australian classical muscle it's you know come in come and sit down in the cars or, or have a look at what's on offer on the bikes and and you know if you're not ready in three months six months time it could be 12 months away but uh you know at least you can come through and do some of your research initially as we've seen in the last few years, the whole man cave scheme has been phenomenal. Uh, you know, it's growing. We are seeing a lot of activity uh, with our memorabilia that we put up for sale. And, uh, you know, the thing is you can come in and buy a sign for a couple of hundred dollars or buy a frame print uh, for the, about the same or buy a really nice petrol pump for three or $4,000. So we're really trying to cater for, you know, enthusiasts of all budgets, really. And, and, and I think that's probably the beauty about this space is, you know, we're able to create that and do that. Um, and there's always something on offer to, to buy here. It could be a model car that you can pick up for 100 or $200. Um, so yeah, so keep an eye out, um, you know, on the website. Most auctions have memorabilia included. A large part of our business has also been the heritage and numerical number plates. You know, we, uh, we've, we've worked a lot with the government instrumentalities uh, in Victoria and New South Wales and also in Queensland. Um, and we've been on, on a front foot of, uh, of number plate sales in this country. Uh, we still hold a couple of records out there for some of the biggest sales in Australia. Um, but, you know, every auction, we have a great selection of Victorian, New South Wales and Queensland plates. And, uh, you know, this market has been buoyant. It's grown uh, incredibly well. Uh, you know, when I started, we probably had really a handful of, of main buyers. Uh, today, we've got hundreds of buyers coming through and we see that through the bidding activity as well uh, online. So it, it's, it, that, that's a story in itself. It's been an interesting journey for me. You know, I've been part of uh, the Shannon's brand for 25 years and, uh, you know, we've seen it grow from a family owned business right through to being owned by a couple of large corporates. And, uh, you know, the business has grown, uh, the vehicles have grown. We've had the opportunity to, to expand the brand and also, you know, an expansion in our showrooms, you know, a, a big, big new showroom here in Melbourne, a uh, new one in Sydney also, and uh, recently a, a beautiful new showroom in Brisbane. And uh, so, so the expansion of that business and the brand, uh, you know, is synonymous with many people around Australia now. Um, but I think our presence on the ground is even greater. Uh, and I think the, the auction results today, you know, we're now sitting at an average of roughly about 90% clearance rate, which is a, a big result uh, for any auction house around the world. Uh, when I started, our clearance rate was probably around a 40% mark. So, you know, not only have we seen an increase in, in clearance rates, but we've seen an increase in the value of vehicles that, that come through. Um, it, so so it's, it's been a phenomenal growth over, for me, the last 25 years. Well, it's only a, a snippet of what we, we have on offer that you've seen. And uh, look, you know, as, as I mentioned, we're open six days a week. We've got, you know, some great staff there. Everyone's welcome to come in, come and have a chat, come and have a cup of tea or a coffee and uh, come and catch up with us. We're uh, more than happy to have you on and, and, uh, and talk about cars and bikes. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. 
It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. And of course, if you own a classic bike, a classic car or a classic truck, it just has to be insured with these guys. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And keep in mind too that the Shannon's Club awaits you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Welcome back. A while ago on Classic Restos, I had the opportunity to catch up with Australia's most travelled lady, and that is Katrina Roundtree. You might remember her being on the show with her father's sensational jag. Now, we had a fantastic day with Katrina and her father's jag, but today it's about her husband, James. He's got, he's got some WB Utes. Here on the property, James, WB Holden Utes, Australiana, mate. Tanks stand in the background. Things don't get much better, do they? No, well, I don't think it gets much better than a WB yet. <laughs> Good on you. Um, now, James, I know you're, you're flat out here. The Rams keep you busy, right? Oh, well, only only at a certain time of the year, but they've done their business and all the lambs are popping out now. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we've, we're busy with other things. A bit of sowing still to go and a bit of spraying. And yeah. That's yeah. good stuff. Good on you, mate. Yeah, well, I appreciate this time out to, to have a talk about this particular WB. Uh, now, I don't know where you find these, but you've obviously had them for a while, James. This one here, 83,000 original Ks. Mm, had um, 79 on it when I bought it. Right, okay. So this one here, yeah, it's a unicorn. Um, it was owned by a lady in Hay, yep. and uh, she had it for the majority of her life. Every service is checked out in the logbook. Um, she sold it to a young fella um, up in uh, Redcliffe mm -hmm. and uh, he proudly drove it home and a, a, probably a gentleman similar to my age saw it and yeah. said, oh man, you can't, you can't have this thing, you'll destroy it. And he, yeah. he took it off his hands pretty quickly yeah. and, uh, and then there were two owners since then that did about 1,200 k's between them and just wow. pretty well polished it and loved it. It's a special time for the Ute too, because the WB obviously being the end of the series, around about 80,000 WBs uh, were made uh, around the 1980 period. Interesting time as well, because this was going to be the next design for the ongoing Kingswood, which uh, uh, never happened. Uh, we saw the WB and the Statesman, they, mm -hmm. they did their Ute and their cab chassis. Um, interesting too, around about 200 WBs also uh, were sent away for the export market too. So a couple, yeah, a couple a of hundred WBs left the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that's an interesting little bit of trivia there. Um, haven't they come into their own? I mean, they I really think, have. I think they always have. Like when I left school in 89, um, I suppose the last of these rolled out in 84 mm. and you know, the, that whole H series from the HQ right through to the, mm. the WB, like they yep. were just such an iconic yep. thing and as, as young guys, um, you know, you just, you, you looked at these things as a thing of beauty and yeah. it was, uh, um, you know, as a young 18 year old yeah. kid, you were never going to buy a house, oh. but uh, well, you could scrape together. Um, uh, and get some sort of a H-series Ute. Righto, James, next cab off the rank, mate, 1982 WB, the V8. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you got the best of both worlds. Got the 6 and the 8. Yeah, well, you've got to have a V8. Um, you know, I love the 6, and this one's probably my favourite Ute yeah. uh, out of the two. So which one drives the nicest? Oh, well, this one's just a beautiful cruiser, and then this one's got a bit more rumble, yeah. and, which annoys you after a while if you're going on a trip but nice for a short little squad around the place. Yeah, and it's got that four barrel on it that we were talking about earlier, yeah. so you've got to like that. 
Yeah. yeah, I've got the Rochester going on there. Uh, a couple of subtle differences between the two. Uh, GDS wheels on this one here. Yep. Uh, of course, the V8 and uh, that beautiful GDS dash as well. Bit of wood grain. Yeah, well, that was something nice. that I, I, I put in. Um, I, I found a new old stock wood grain dash and uh, it was about the only box that... Uh, the, 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 the original owner of this one didn't, didn't yeah. tick. He didn't have the GPS yeah, dash. I bet you're glad you did the dash when you did. I wouldn't like to try and find a dash now. No. So your timing was great. My timing was pretty good. So what's the story behind the V8, James? Well, this one um, I saw advertised and I bought it within about 20 minutes. Yep. It was just a really... So you put a lot of thought into it. Oh, yeah, it was an impulse yeah. buy. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was um, just really original condition mm. um it was a one one owner ute the the fella that owned this ute worked on the production line in adelaide oh wow yeah. and um yeah they got a they got a staff discount yeah he, he bought this ute and he had it his whole life wow and uh when he passed away i bought it off his daughter wow um and it was it was very original, hardly mm. any rust on it. Yeah. A little bit of rust um, low down and yeah. inside one of the doors. Yeah. But very tight. Yeah. Um, Isn't that, that special though? That that meant so much to the guy. Yeah. You're, te and, you're technically the sec well, you're second owner from the family. Yeah. So that's really nice. And so you you really don't want to like I I mm. really didn't want to mess around with his ute. He's, yeah. He had the the visor on it. The yeah. GDS wheels, yeah. which. Um, I'm not a massive fan of, but um, yeah, that's that's yeah. what we're. It's kind of a well, it's a tribute to him and it's a respect to him, isn't it? That's mm. the way that, like you say, that he had it, and for you to um, c continue his legacy with the vehicle, I think is yeah, exactly. is really nice. And I reckon he probably would have been kicking himself he didn't tick the GDS dash box, yeah. and so I think I've done that one for him. Yeah, well done. Okay, both uh, obviously uh, automatic cars as well. Things in terms of. Uh, wrong with the cars like they for their age and they're original uh they're just good honest vehicles aren't they yeah yeah absolutely so nothing's really nothing has to be done to e either of them if you get one of these old cars there's usually plenty that has to be done yeah because yep. just because of the age yeah sure uh, yeah. suspension's um uh, a bit of a thing yeah uh, this one here, I had to do everything. Right. It was a full engine rebuild. Oh, it had yeah. been rebuilt once before, but yeah. to preserve the matching numbers yeah. of, of the vehicle, I had to do a really uh, major uh, rebuild, which yes. of course I didn't do myself. Yes. Because um, I'd rather rather get someone that knows yeah. what they're doing to do do the job absolutely properly. engine building is a is certainly a craft and i noticed too that the the carby looks pretty new as well uh yeah we we put a rebuilt yeah. carby on it uh, yeah. because uh, like a lot of these vehicles it was on gas yeah okay and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that sort of really plays havoc with yeah. carbies and yeah. it's easier to mm. to get someone that knows what they're doing to to buy a rebuilt one than yeah. fiddle around with with, with with a carby yeah we did uh, so you, you remove the gas totally yeah we removed yeah. the gas totally um full engine rebuild mm. full power steering pump yep. rebuild yeah um rebuild on the gearbox yeah um we did all the suspension um and new radiator all yeah. those bits and pieces yeah uh, well, it's obvious, James, that these WB utes are dear to your heart, and uh, to have them in this condition, mate, look, they, they do grow on you. They're, they're a styly ute. They really are. Makes us think what the uh, next um, generation of Kingswood sedan would have looked like had they had they gone ahead. Mm. Uh, but it was real uh, testing ground stuff with this WB ute. And as we said earlier, they, they made it to the Statesman, and that was, a, that was a beautiful car as well. So, James... Mate, thank you once again for your time. It's been wonderful catching up. No worries. Um, but waited a while to try and pin this guy down with his ute. So thanks again, James. No worries, and uh, thanks for sharing these WBs with us today, mate. All right? No worries. All right. Cheers, James. Cheers. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Classic Restos, featuring one of the outstanding Shannon's auction houses at Heatherton near Melbourne, Victoria. And, of course, rounding off with the WB utes belonging to James. I hope you liked it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching.
you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.